Hello and welcome. DJ Vic Vapor with you. And we're going to be taking a look at Bitwig Studio 2 throughout this course. And uh, in this particular tutorial, we are focused on the dashboard. So this is what you see when you open up the new Bitwig Studio 2. This is kind of what you're presented with. You've got uh, a user category here that's got recent projects and uh, all kinds of different things like that. And you've also got a category here for demos. So if you want to see how other artists or producers or other companies are using uh, Bitwig or what they have to offer, that'll all be presented and available to you here. So that is under the user profile. Now you can select new project and it'll go and open up a new project for you. Or you can select to open a file and pick one either off the list here or something from your hard drive. So let's go ahead over to the category titled Settings and we can take a look at um, User Interface. So here it's going to allow us to uh, set up our um, particular preferences as far as display so we can choose from any number of type of displays that are appropriate for what we have available. And then you've got uh, our audio tab down here where you can take a look at setting up your audio. So you can select your uh, audio device here, your, whatever you have connected. Mine's a fairly simple one, so it just has a USB codec. Nothing uh, fancy going on here as far as a um, sound card, just a nice little external one that I travel with quite a bit for live performances. So I, I've got something I feel comfortable with as far as beating it up and utilitarian. But anyhow, let's stay focused on Bitwig. Um, and then we've got my output device set to the Soundflower for our tutorial. And here you can select your uh, sample rate. Mine is currently set to automatic, but you can choose from uh, two different ones there. Whatever you feel good, comfortable with, there's no right or wrong there. Now buffer size is currently, I just got auto, I'm letting Bitwig select what the best buffer size is here, currently set at 256 and 5.8 milliseconds, which is perfectly fine. Uh, if you if you want to take auto off and choose your own, that's fine. But for my needs, I'm just going to leave it on. So essentially, what you're looking at within buffer sizes are uh, basically how long does the program respond from the moment you've given it a signal or an input request to the time that it delivers the sound. So essentially if you've got a MIDI keyboard or a MIDI controller, something like that, and you're pressing uh, and reacting to various knobs and things, the buffer size, the higher the buffer size, the longer it's going to take for uh, the um, DAW or the sound to respond back to you from those actions. So lower the buffer size, you know, the better, but you, you have to Play with that a little bit to get a perfect mix there because you might get some audio breaking up and things like that so the buffer size is um, just something to taste it takes a little bit of practice to dial that in but if you're not too particularly um, worried about that or you're, everything's performing well I would just leave it at auto down here you've got uh, your inputs these are specific to my external sound card so if I had more in and out channels available they would all be listed here and then of course I could add mono or add stereo and continue to select and uh, modify that the way I need. My output buses here are just um, speakers so I've got my left and right and everything good to go so you can add headphones and add additional speakers and things like that if you choose. So I'm going to go down here to uh, controllers and this section we're going to take a look at where you, this is how you would um, if you have, like I have a APC-40 Mark II MIDI controller. So it's already recognized. I don't have it plugged in right now, but it's recognized it's been plugged in before. So if you wanted to add a controller, you can say detect. You can select this and Bitwig will search and detect anything that's plugged in. Or if it's not detecting it, you can add the controller manually just by going here and selecting from generic. Um, and this, of course, you'd want to select if you have a MIDI controller, you'd want to select keyboard plus eight device knobs. 
or if you just have a MIDI keyboard, then you wouldn't want to select that. But if you have a MIDI controller that has knobs and pads and things like that, this is kind of where you'd want to be. But if you don't see yours on the list here, you can always add generic and then kind of go in here and work with one of those. So they have a pretty good range of some of the most popular ones available to us. So it may or may not show up on the list. More than likely, it probably is on that list. And then what do we got left? We've got um, packages. So on our packages, these are the uh, partner packages and partner collections or extended collections that come with Bitwig Studio. Feel free to update yours uh, as, as you feel needed. So you've got different ones here. You know, I, I probably need to update a few of mine. I just haven't been uh, focused on that currently. So, but you've got your different um, available packages here and things like that. So, and then you've got your help menu if you want to go in and, you know, talk to different uh, forums or just see different ideas here and different courses and things to learn about. Um, aspects of uh, Bitwig Studio. So that is essentially our dashboard. So I'm going to go ahead and select new project. And I've got a default template. When mine comes open, it comes open to a default template. I'll go ahead and activate the audio. And that pretty much gets us going here. So let's go ahead and move on to the uh, next uh, tutorial and we'll talk a little bit about how to set up that default template and we'll take a look at this interface in a little bit closer uh, view. Alright, let's move on to the next tutorial.